Welcome to the Big Data and Hadoop tutorial series presented by COSO IT. This video is focused on Flume. In this topic, we will be covering what is Flume, Flume overview. Then we will be talking about the difference between Flume and Scoop. What is Flume architecture and building blocks of Flume. Then we learn how to configure a Flume agent and see some of the Flume commands also. And finally, we'll do a hands-on and give you an example on Hello World in Flume. So what is Flume? Flume is a data ingestion tool in the Hadoop world. Flume basically collects, aggregates and moves large amounts of streaming data into centralized data stores such as HDFS. It is primarily used for log aggregation from various sources and then finally push to HDFS. I give you one real world example. Supposing Amazon wants to analyze customer behavior from a particular region. It has huge amount of log data which is getting generated from the activity of users on Amazon website that is coming from various sources like Facebook, Twitter. So this log or even data getting generated needs to be ingested into HDFS. And to capture this type of data that is generating in real time, Flume is an appropriate tool. So Flume is basically ingesting streaming data into HDFS means designed to capture data as it is generated like real-time or streaming data. Then channel it to HDFS for storage and subsequent processing. In Flume, each data item captured is considered an event. So Flume collects the data or events and aggregates them to put them in HDFS. Let us see how Flume is different from Scoop. Flume and Scoop are both data ingestion tools. Flume is used to ingest streaming data, while Scoop is used to ingest data from any kind of relational databases like Oracle or MySQL etc. Flume is used for collection and aggregation of data, typically of log data, while Scoop transfers data parallelly by making a connection to the database. Both the tools are quite popular in real world scenario. For example, GoIBibo uses Flume to transfer log data into HDFS, while coupons.com uses Scoop to transfer data between its IBM Netezza data warehouse and Hadoop Word. Now let us have an inside view of Flume or we will see the Flume architecture. Here in this diagram we see three things, web servers, Flume agent and HDFS. So events are generated by external sources like web servers and are consumed by Flume data source. So what is an event? Flume represents data as events. For example, each log entry saved in a web server can be considered as an event or a new post added on Twitter can also be considered as an event. Now these events are consumed by Flume data sources. The external source sends events to Flume source in a format that is recognized by the target source. Next is the Flume agent. So Flume agent is an independent daemon process, a kind of JVM or we can also say in simplest term that it is the simplest unit of Flume deployment. So each Flume agent has three components, the source, the channel and the sync. Flume source receives an event and stores it into one or more channels. The channel acts as a go down or a storehouse which keeps the events until they are consumed by the Flume sync. The channel may use local file system 
in order to store these events. Then the third component, the flume sink. It removes the events from channels and stores it into an external repository, for example, HDFS or to an another flume agent. So there can be more than one flume agents in which flume sync forwards the events to flume source of the other flume agent in the data flow. So we have seen that in flume architecture, the main component we see is the flume agent, which has three major components, source, channel and sync. Let us see in detail the building blocks of Flume that is the source, channel and the sync. Source. Source is responsible to send the event to the channel it is connected to. It may have a logic of relating to reading data, translate to events or handle failures. It has no control over how the event is stored in the channel. There can be many Flume sources of data that Flume uh, supports like Netcat, exec, Evero, sequence file generator, TCP, UDP, thrift and protocol buffers. Channel Channel connects the source or sources and the sync or sinks. Channel acts as a buffer with configurable capacity. Channel can be either a memory channel, a file channel or a database. So durable channel is a must for recoverability. Sync. Sync waits for events from the configured channel. It is responsible to send the event to the desired output. It manages issues like timeouts or retries. And it can set up sync groups like a group of prioritized syncs to manage sync failures. And as long as one sync in the group is available, the agent will function. So we have seen three components of Flume agent and now we will see how to configure these components, the source, channel and the sync. So to configure the Flume agent, you need to create a text file and the text file uses the property file format similar to that of Java property file with key value pairs separated by new line. Let us see an example file of a single node, Flume configuration. Let us name the agent as agent1. Now to name the components on this agent, we say agent1.sources r1, sinks name k1 and channels as c1. Now we will be describing and configuring the source, channel and sink one by one. For describing or configuring the source, we can tell the type as netcat, bind ip as localhost and the port number as 44444. Now describing the sync. For describing the sync, you can define agent1.sync.k1.type equal to logger. Here it defines the type of sync as logger. Then you can define a channel, supposing it buffers events in memory. So we will define the agent channel type as memory. Then you can define other parameters also like capacity and transaction capacity. Capacity means the maximum number of Flume events it can hold. And transaction capacity means the maximum number of events that can be written. And finally we bind the source and sync to the channel. A source can write to one or more channels. That's why here the channels is plural. While a sync can read from only one channel. That's why the property defined here is singular channel. So in this configuration file, we have defined a single agent named agent1, which has a netcat source type that listens for data on port 4444, a channel that buffers event data in memory, and a sync that is of type logger that logs event data to the console. Now after configuring the file, we need to start the flume agent. That is done through flume ng command. The flume ng command has parameters like agent, 
it is the command to start the flume agent then we give dash dash name or dash n parameter with the name of the agent to start the agent dash dash conf file uses configuration file in the conf directory dash f parameter it specifies the config file path in which your configuration has been set for the agent dash t property equal to value parameter sets a java system property value in this example a java option forces flume to log to the console okay now let us see one simple hello world example in flume using cloud error so open up your terminal in cloud error as a first step we are going to write a configuration file so first log in to root password is cloud error now go to conf directory cd slash etc slash flume ng slash conf here you will see so many conf files and now we are going to configure flume dot conf file here let's open a vi editor to edit this file so this is a configuration file which has key value pairs and it's a form of text file so first thing we are doing here is name the components on this agent our agent name is agent 1 and we are defining the component source sync and channel and naming those components then next step we are describing and configuring the source source type here is netcat which has a bind ip local host and the port number as 44444 now the sync type we are defining here is the logger then we are using the channel which buffers events in memory so the type of channel we are using here is memory then we are also defining the capacity and transaction capacity here and finally we are binding the source and sync to the channel c1 so source can write to more than one channels while sync can read from only one channel after setting up the configuration file saving it now we should run the flume agent for running the flume agent we'll be using flume ng command flume ng agent then dash n parameter and giving the agent name here is agent1 then we need to specify the path of the file configuration file here is flume.conf let's run this flume agent after running this you can see that our source is listening to port number 4444 and this is the local host ip address now let's send some data to it using telnet let's open up another terminal and send some data to it using telnet so if you have not installed telnet you can use the command sudo yum install telnet after installing telnet you can use it like telnet localhost and then give the port number so now using telnet will be providing localhost and the port number and now we will send flume an event string like hello world now we can see that here on our original flume terminal we see output event in a log message here given as hello world so to summarize we created a simple config file that included one source writing to one channel feeding one sync and the source listened on a socket for network clients to connect to and send it event data then these events are written to in memory channel and then given to log 4j sync to become the output so the we connected to our listening agent using linux netcat utility and we are sending a string hello world to our flume agent source finally we verified that our log 4j based sync wrote the events string as hello world 
So this is how we configure a Flume agent and run it. Thanks a lot for watching our Flume tutorial. For more tutorials, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can also register for in-depth big data training with our real-time cluster on www.cosyt.com.